Shallow. It doesn't talk more about yourself. Is that right? I think it's the other way. You think it's the other way around. Then they say cover letter, it is more, more. If they say application letter, it is more shallow. Yeah, more shallow. Just the job and what Just the job and what you do. Yeah. Right? So if, if that is what you have, is that the same thing you, 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 you have? Is that the, the, the definition you have? of what a cover letter and an application letter is? Dorothy. Cover letter is a letter that introduces or encourages one to read another document, like you introduce them yourself. Right. Right, so it is more, and remember this is, a do, all we are talking about a document you write when you're applying for a job or you're applying for maybe a training or anything that has to be attached. Most times they say attach a cover letter or attach a letter or of, of, of intent or they say attach a personal statement, right? So if th those are the, the, the key things they're talking about, which one is which for the job? Now, because we're not going to be talking so much during this, cover letter, application letter, these are pretty much the same thing. You get it? Does it make sense? It is almost the same. It is the same thing. The problem is that... Um, the British came in and they call it the application letter. And then the Americans call it a cover letter, something to cover your resume or CV that you would have written down there. So how do you make, letter of intent is a letter which talks about uh, your interest. It is, all of those three are pretty much the same thing. It is something that talks about your interest into a particular job into a particular position, into a particular role, okay? How do you structure? So, if, if you know it, that this is a letter you write when you are looking for a job or when you are looking for a fellowship or a training, how should you structure it? There are various ways in which many people have been trained on how to structure cover letters and, and, uh, and application letters and things like that. But some of, the most, some of the most important ways in which you can, you can, uh, do I really need to, anyway. Some of the ways in which you can draft they include the following. For you to stand out when it comes to writing a cover letter. First of all, may, all of you are graduating. The reason why I called you for this training is because all of you are graduating soon. Whether you're in second year, you're in first year, there's a time T where you're going to graduate and you're going to start looking for jobs. And you will not have a hands-on training like we're having one right now. So, how do you draft a good cover letter. How should it be drafted? I want to hear from you. How, what, what are the things you consider? What are the things you consider? Not Dorothy. Maureen. Maureen. Maureen says information about yourself. So why you are interested in the job? Okay, maybe the skills. She says why you're interested in the job. And then she says the skills. What else come to your mind? Maybe what makes you the, the best person for that job. 
what makes you the best? Is it almost the same? Why are you interested in this? Okay. Okay, who else? Yeah? Wh what are your strengths? So do you capture all this information in there? Strength? Yes? Your experience in that particular field. Your experience in that particular field. Okay, any other ideas? Do you even give a little bit about your qualification? Is it important to say something about your education? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. That sh someone says you should have been the first. But is it true you should have been the first? Well, the first is the bio data. Then the bio data. We're talking about cover letter. Okay? We're talking about cover letter. It says your name. Email, telephone number. telephone number, and then what else? What do you mean? The agency. Ag the, the what? Oh, the name of the institution or you're addressing the letter to. Institution. Oh, it might not. Yes. Yeah. Some. Yeah. I think uh, they also include how you come. You came to know about the job. Sometimes, sometimes uh, the word limit is always stressed out. You don't have to include it. It is not as relevant as it, as you should include it, but also sometimes in the Ugandan way of writing, it's important that people include it. So depending on the market where you're addressing, it is important for you to, to follow. The way they write it in France, in the US, or in Canada might be different from how it is done here. One time I was training the students of Public Health Nurses College, and I told them on a cover letter, you could start off by saying, thank you for considering me. That is like you've already written your address, You've put the date, then you've put the date, that the address of the organization, then you've put your dear someone, and then I told him, you start off with the first paragraph is, you say, thank you for considering me. Everyone was like, how do you start saying thank you? They were saying, how do you, we are used to the idea that we start off by saying, how do you normally start off with yours? Okay, dear sir, it's fine. I'm not saying we the upper one. Let's say you're done with writing dear sir, you're done with writing re, you're done with writing this re application for the position of this and this, and now you're going to the body. How do you start your body? You start by requesting what you want, what you're going for. So why don't you request? First request. Uh, I humbly request for. Uh -huh. I humbly request. This is, the, this is one of the natures in which people write, right? I humbly request. I humbly request. Right? Well, what else? How many of you have written and you still have different ways of writing it, yes? I hereby request. I hereby I hereby request. What else? Some of you would uh, hear, some of you would start, uh, due to the circumstances of <laughs> my poverty. <laughs> due to the circumstances of my poverty, I... Then the next thing you hear is a slap on your face. <laughs> Poor, go away with your nonsense. Why are you saying... No, I'm, it's just a joke. So the idea is that, you see, this, all of these documents that I'm talking about, whether it is the cover letter, whether it is the intent letter, or it is uh, the CV or resume, 
all of these documents are documents that are meant to sell you, to sell you as an individual. You want to be the best of the best. You get it? So all of it is intended to sell you. So you should be as lucid. By lucid, I mean as convincing and as encouraging as possible for you to sell yourself. And therefore, the language you use to convince someone to take you on board is very important. You get it? So, sometimes uniqueness is very important. How you start is very, very important. So, for example, I said you would start off by saying, uh, you know, thank you for considering my application for the position of admin assistant for Uganda Christian University. You get it? Some people will start off, thank you for considering my application for the position of admin assistant at Uganda Christian University. Does that, does that make any sense if you started writing your cover letter in that format? Does it make sense? Becky. Maybe. Okay, not so far. I don't think it's you don't think it is necessary to start in that format? I understand where you're coming from. In terms of, of course, viewpoints, I'm not saying in any negative way. So that is, that is very, very important. It has three, a uh, cover letter has three, it has to be about three different paragraphs. The first paragraph, should introduce you. We have the introduction. And these are things you probably have learned. The second paragraph is more like the body, the body which tells us about what you are doing. Okay? The body. And then the third paragraph should be a conclusion. Now, conclusion should be derived from these things here, from your introduction, okay? That is, that is basically the structure around which I want you to, to know how a cover letter is broken down. You get it? Now, the challenge is that I'm going to use my own cover letter. Uh, Mark? Mark, just a second. Sorry? Vital curriculum? No, I'm not getting you. Just one second. No, no, no. I So, um, one of the reasons why I wanted, I want you to try and uh, take out exactly the same format. I'm using my experience to let you guys have something which is solid when it comes to writing a cover, cover letter. Yes, 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 so I'm going to use my very same cover letter. It's very unique. Um, most times we want to say, sometimes people will later on look at CVs. Some people say they include, they want to include the address. They want to include uh, things like PO box. They include things like, um, what else do you include in your address? So you say Lydia who? Lydia Mutesi. Yes, that is it. That is it. Now, are you seeing this? Before you start focusing on it. <laughs> and I'm telling, I'm, the reason why I'm showing you this is so that you, you, you really, it's not that you copy word for word, but the way you can tailor it to suit professionally. You tailor it to suit 
to suit your interest, to suit the position you're applying for, to get ideas. Because you might not necessarily have the kind of education and qualification and the kind of the things I relate to. But if you can bring it on your cover letter, it would be very good. So I want you to, if you had a computer, you would, I could share this with you, but I could also, you could take note. You get it? So in that sample example, you see me introducing, coming out with an introduction. You see me elaborating about the body, what I bring, what I offer. You see me talking in the, tech, in the conclusion, how I bring my conclusion. And this is exactly what I want you also to use. So what do you put up there in your address? What is included in your address? So he says P.O. Box. What if you don't have, but then we shall discuss that later. What else do you include? Email. So it's more personal information. Some people put their plot number, plot stuff, and all that stuff. Okay? Telephone number. That's good. One of the things I would discourage you all from doing is, not discouraging you, but because the world is moving like you're in this... This is a very sophisticated room with so many new technology. The world is moving away from the idea of P.O. How many of you have gone to get your letters from P.O. Box? And now, be sincere. How many of you have, have applied for a job or for anything, and then they sent you a reply on your P.O. Box? Think, think about it. How many of you? Very few. How many of you included your plot number and house number, and then these people really followed you up to your home to find out where you stay. In today's nature of application, it's always very rare for to find people including those block plot numbers. It, the idea is so new that when you tell people not to include PO box, they'll think that you're going to, you're not doing the good, the right job. They think that you're, 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 you're selling yourself law. What you should include is your name, your email, and your telephone contact. Because that is the most easiest way for them to reach you. You get it? And you demo, you'll see that later. Now, after you've written that, you include your date. The date, the date in which you're applying for that job. Around when is that, that time? No, oh, it's uh, here. So just like we are, we are talking about this. This is, this is a, jo this is an application for a job that I applied in South Sudan as a manager. Something. It was a bit very high for me, but I, so I ended up not, not, not being called. But they reached out to me, and then told me that it didn't go through. You get it. Number one. It is only Pasqualino or Kelo. After Pasqualino or Kelo, I put my email. Yes? After the email, I put my contact. Two, two lines. You can, this is my style. You can either decide to have it this side. Some people prefer to have it this side. You can either decide to have it here. You get it? Then, this is how I write the date, July 13th, 2008. You get it? Then the person, fortunately, what happened is, now one of the challenges also when I was training other people is that the fear that you cannot address someone by his or her name. Always in Uganda, the idea is that you should say, dear sir, dear madam because it covers a lot of respect. You get it? The challenge with, uh, with, with that is that so many people have written, dear sir, dear madam. The beauty is if you address someone by their names and if you know that you're writing it to a particular person, the person, eh, this person is a bit more detailed, knows my name, is actually addressing the letter to me directly, will give more time to observe your, your letter. Just like I wrote to this lady. She's a lady. Uh, dear Miss Nina Pedersen, Country Director, South Sudan, Dan Church Aid. 
And I addressed it to her directly and said, Dear Miss Pitson, thank you. And you see, this is a column. Uh, does it make sense? I started off by saying, thank you for considering my application for the DCA program manager position in Juba, South Sudan. In a way, I'm already appreciate. I'm saying you have already considered it. The idea that, so remember I told you the introduction? Just in one, two, three, four, five, six, lines, you already talked a little bit about yourself. There's a way in which you can, you can twist this. Does it make sense? My core values align with, and, and by the way, a bachelor's of Makere student, or oh, Chambogo, if you wrote something like this, this is not a bachelor's sort of writing. You're already ahead. This is not bachelor's writing. This is, this is high. This is different from what is common. Very, very different. So number one is my core values. You as a student, you as someone who is, do you have values? And what are your values? Do they align with, because the idea is you have done research, you know about the organization, you, you, you might be, it, may, it might be a Christian-based organization. They have values like stewardship, if it was UCU. Do the Christian values fall in with your core values? My core values align with UCUs, and I am eager to use my background and skills to contribute to the vision of removing hunger, or of what is UCU's vision? Vision of building uh, supporting me. I don't know what the vision of UCU is. You get it? There has to be a vision that drives you as an individual that makes you relate to that institution after your background. So, um, skills to contribute to the vision of removing hunger, poverty, and oppression from South Sudan. Throughout my 10 years of professional experience, I have managed programs. So, for example, you say, this is an introduction. You're saying you have managed programs, and therefore, it has to be demonstrated whether it was through internship, whether it was through volunteers, whether it was through the projects. Many of you have asked you to go and do projects, right? I asked you to go and do research. No, no, don't just say, don't just say, mm, and then we, we, we are not sure what you, have you done those things? Maureen, have you? Like which one? Entebbe Express. The internships you've done, Entebbe Express Highway, I'm going to share this with you. I'm going to share this thing with you. This is just um, more of the practical part of it for that you know what I'm talking about. These things here, you talk about them, you have managed, pro pro yours would be projects. All of you have managed projects, even when you had a leader in your group, but all of you managed that project to make a success, and you presented it. Fortunately for you, Many of you did presentations here, and it was captured on video. So when it comes to interview, you're very happy to say that you have managed projects, and it can be seen in the interviews, sorry, in the, on YouTube, which, you, which was recorded by your university. It makes sense? Does it, does it make sense? Now, remember, this is very quick. We shall have one-on-one -on -one sessions to even go deeper into explaining some of these things, if it's not very clear. So. Like I said, I secured grants. One of the requirements for that job as a manager was to, that you have, you have ever secured grants. You have worked with grants. So when I was working for DFIT in, 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 in Budapest, I was working on some grants and stuff like that. So I, I write very clearly. And also I have a, this may part your company. We want a USAID project to supply furniture to over, over 1,000 furniture to, in a school called Opit in Gulu and uh, I secured grants to run it and, and all that stuff. So all of this falls under grants and demonstrated innovative leadership. My innovative leadership could be, for example, guiding students of UCU. 
especially for the courses I taught, into making very good present, uh, projects. Yours could be that you were part of a team that worked on, um, on those projects, public-private partnerships and all of that. That, that is the introduction. What of the body? I am passing, and, uh, and then I give a little bit of, uh, yes, while gaining first-hand experience in South Sudan. Now, I, I talk about this because I have worked on a project which was directly tackling issues on South Sudan. Am I talking to human beings? Yeah. Oh, I'm talking just to people who are dozing off after a heavy meal. Heavy meal, you're doing... Introduction, I've introduced, I've told them that I have these experiences and backgrounds in resolving towards their mission. Introduction. I am now talking about the body. The body is now telling them here, I am personally committed to the vision and mission of the having, and a bit about yourself. Me, I narrowly survived LRA abduction. Because this is a, a job which requires you to work with in a, in a more complicated area, you, they have to, you need to touch people's hearts. What is your peak experience which makes you suitable for that job? Sometimes you just don't know, but what is that experience that makes you very suitable for that job? What, what, when, you sit, when you sit back, what is it that touches you deep inside there? Which when you, for example, I would, if, if it was an organization working with, with people with HIV, Did you have a sister or brother who passed on as a result of HIV? Can you bring that story? You, you get what I mean? Yeah. Can you bring that story so that someone feels that, okay, this is someone we want. He has actually gone through that experience. For example, if you are rep, rep, you're applying to an organization that deals with things of rep. Do you have someone, is it you? If it is you, have you gone through it yourself? Can you bring that in your cover letter? So they know that you're, you're not doing it just for the sake, but because you're passionate, you've gone through it. If it is something of uh, Ebola or whatever, an organization, UNICEF or whatever it is, have you had relatives die because of that? Have you narrowly... So I bring in this story of mine as well. And then later on I talk about the foundation. I founded this institution and then introduce these things. So, and then go on deeper to now let them know that even when I have organized this, I have started this organization, um, I have led over 50 women citizens on, I think I need a clicker. I think it's not there. So, how do you tie it in? I know it sounds a bit more complicated. And then, this is now towards the conclusion, but it's more emphasizing on, it's more emphasizing on what experiences you're bringing. I am experienced in innovative leadership. Remember I told them up here that I bring that experience. So, we have a, a life saver here. Sometimes you, you remember I said, this is what I do. I have done this and I've been innovative in leadership. All of these points I've identified here, I'm expanding them. I'm expanding them here and also down here. So you see innovative leadership, project management and grant solicitation and administration. So prior, doesn't show, but it ah, should have been. So prior, then you bring many students. What the, one of the challenges you face is you want to start off with your education up there. Depending on how the institution has actually put itself, you can bring your education in any format. Prior to obtaining my master's in public administration, this is policy at the Central European University, I executed the USAID project and all that. This execution of a USAID project is telling you about the grant, managing grants. 
Um, it's all, it's um, also telling, I successfully coordinated the project administration, logistics, and secured grants to kickstart the work. While at US CEU, I honed and demonstrated my skills through my coursework, specialized skills, training, and consulting projects for the Department for International Development. That is in, in Budapest, but it was a project for Sudan. Since graduating, I applied these skills by piloting. Since you graduated from UCU, you have applied these skills on the projects you did with uh, on PPPs, on the different projects. That is how you want to relate it. Does it make sense? No. Does it make sense? Don't just say, shake your heads when it doesn't make sense. Is it making sense? No, it's not. Huh? <laughs> we shall, so I'm also running through this very quickly so that we, 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 we will have one-on-one -on -one sessions and we don't have so much time because of uh, the other things we're supposed to be working on. Number two, if you saw the, this guy's CV, I just worked on it yesterday. This is CV. You saw this CV, how many of you thought it was good? How many of you thought the CV was good? I mean, why did you say it was not good, Maureen? You don't have, have no idea. She has no idea whether it's good or bad. What about you? Did you see it? You have just arrived. Come and sit here. You have no idea. Because uh, what the idea I'm asking is you have to have a look at this, then you tell me, is this a good CV or it's not? That is the first page. Is it a good CV or it's not? It's a so what, what we did, we sat together yesterday and I walked him through, the thing is that he skips so much which makes us, so let me use the hand. Sorry. So if you look at his CV, you see so my, so a lot of changes in terms of trying to organize it and clarity. For example, we have a summary. The gentleman is graduating next year. So he, in his CV, which, you're going to, which you've already seen, it's not very clear when he's going to graduate. He's talking about so many things. It's all over the place. His CV is, two, is three pages. My CV is just two pages, actually mine, who has a lot of experience. So for him, he has... This is two pages, but it's more condensed. So you realize I changed, we worked on, we, I tried, I was having an engagement with him. So what is it that you want to reduce? What is your aim? What is your future vision? Learning from him. Then we started capturing. Just to have a summary of his qualification highlighted here. You get it? Then we went on to the education. For him, if you look at his education there, what do you see? What do you see? You don't see orderliness. Very it's very narrow. Now, he's applying for a job as a social worker, I think. And the course units I asked him to include here are course units that reflect something to do with social work. If you're applying for a job as an administrator, you include course units that reflect you as a what? As an administrator. If you're applying for policy, you guys have taken courses in policy, you want to include course units that reflect policy. They should be about five or six. Start off with the university, kind of italicized it. Then we had the bachelors of him. It's still ongoing, which if you see on this CV, it's not. Then we break it down, the three different, I don't know, I tried asking him, these are the things he gave me for the course units. Then we talked a bit about his, now, some of you will be very good performers. You have first class, which is very good. Some of you have scholarships, which is also very good. It's very important for you to, to highlight it somewhere here. After this bachelor's, you say full scholarship. Not everyone gets the opportunity of winning scholarships, so you include it. 
Then some of you got 20 for 20 or 25, 25 points. It's very nice. If you have 19, 15 upwards, those are good points. You can always include them down here. I'm running through this eh? because of time constraints. But And then normally they don't want, people don't look for this unless you're applying for government. Normally you, pull, you, fr you throw these ones out. Normally people don't include them if you have a bachelor's already. But if you're applying to government, they might want to see. These things are not included. Me, I don't even include my senior six or senior four or P7 because it's not important so much. Normally, they ask if you have a bachelor's, if you have a diploma, or if you have whatever, whatever it is that you have. For him, in his, in his copy, what did he write? Now, this is CV. This is the part of CV. We, we talked about cover letter and left it. Right? We are now talking on CV. This is how a CV should be structured. The first is also to have a quick name, email, and telephone number. Then you can have a summary. The summary is one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, five lines to make a paragraph is enough. You get it? All of you who have come in, we shall have that session where I'll, I'll do these things for you. We shall have the copies. You all go with various copies of your CV sitting one on one with you to make them perfect. After the summary, you want to include your education. Some people, what happens is you don't talk about your education. Uh, they want to go straight to work experience. Instead of having education here, they come and put work experience up here. It's not, it's not necessarily the best, but what we would encourage is that you have your education put up. So there is education, then you have experience, then after that, you might want to have a few things like your interests, the language spoken, depending on where you're applying for this job. Sometimes languages you're, you're speaking if it's not international, it might not necessarily be important. Then, do you have any trainings? And then referees, people you can refer to. Make sense? Does it quickly make sense? Before we, we go to the scholarships or interviews, I'll just walk through this. Let's say experience. Let's say experience. How many of you, you've worked, you've done internship, and you just write intern? You don't write anything else, you just write intern. This one was saying, he, had, he did not include these ones here. Is that the spelling of clerks? He just had intern. The idea is that you've been working, so when you do internship, you are interning in someone's foot, in someone's shoes. So the idea is for you to, to speak in the footsteps of a clerk. Of, is it, were you working in the clerk's department? Were you working in the research department in parliament? Were you working in the finance department? Is your major what you're studying finance? If it's finance, then you, you just say it's finance assistant intern they still know, because that is what you've been working in. When you just put your position as intern, it's too broad. It's, it doesn't tell anyone clearly what you've been working on. And then a few points. Normally, in the points, the bullet points you have here are at, at worst four. There should be four bullet points under each with short, clear, easy to understand sentences. Make sense? Short, clear to understand sentences under each work experience, just like you're seeing these ones here. Recorded minutes of proceedings in both committee and committee meetings and plenary. It's clear. Drafted committee reports. Uh, drew up committee work plans. Maybe reviewed uh, research work from the research officers, something like that. Then he also did internship. 
here, Law Development Center. If you look at his copy of CV, what is he saying? Vincent, what is the guy saying under Law Development Center? And he said administrative intern, which was good, yes. What was in the yeah. beginning? So one of the things I noticed in his letter was he, was he was still using the present continuous tense. For example, he was using managing meetings, both managing. He was also saying leading communication flow through email engagement. He was saying answered telephone calls, answering, sorry. He was saying these are present continuous. Instead of using past tense to really show that you've worked in that institution long time, you still leave it open. Is that what he was doing? Yes. Preparing. You've already, you've left LDC a long time ago, yet you still have things like preparing. Then the same thing. It should be in present, it should be in past tense. Trained similarly. But the most important thing also to bring in your interest, depending on how you look at yourself. So some of you might... Uh, if you're, if you're a good, if you're co-curricular, some of you have won very many. Even my certificate, by the way, which you're going to get, it should be included. Because some people will ask you, how, how wow, you're very good with interviews. Then they will just see, oh, this person actually went through a soft skills training interview. So it will demonstrate to, to, to interviewers and they will know that you've been participating. But interest, so some people want to know, you know, you're being interviewed for a job, they are seeing your CV, they want to see, do, does this person watch soccer? Can he relate with us? We want to get someone who is easy for us also to relate with. You don't have to be boring. Creative, cricket, chess, that is, those are things he includes. If it were me, I wouldn't include these things. Some of you include them just because you want to demonstrate. Me, I wouldn't include them. But it depends on how I, I would have a one-on-one -on -one talk with you, and then we walk through your CVs together. You might want to have it included. You might not want to have it included. So I will include it appropriately. You get it? Mm. Makes sense? Yes. This is more of an introduction. Then when it comes to, I'll make follow-ups with you each so that we, the trainings, this one, para counselors training, by Uganda Christian University. I know, Lydia, you have many certificates from UCU, Maureen, too. We don't include all of those certificates into the CV. You identify which ones are relevant for the job you're applying for, and then you just put those relevant ones. For this training, it is relevant for all. You get it? It wasn't supposed to be in this nature of lecturing, but because of time constraints, we shall do the interview session more intense than, more engaging than, uh, than, than these ones. And then, many times, they say you should also include referees. This is how you should include your referee. The name of that person, the position, and then you have the place where the person works, and a contact. The contact could be phone or it could be email. Yes. Okay, so if the person has left the organization, the question now therefore is, you mean you have not been communicating to your referee to know that they have left? So that means you should always reach out to your referee just to know where they are and tell them that you're including them as a referee. Make sense? Yes, if you include them, they will know and they will tell you, okay, I've actually left parliament, now I'm in a different institution. If you're putting these details, yes, change it from parliament to maybe Ministry of Finance. Right? The key point here is that you should communicate to your referees. I am refereeing some gentleman is applying for some scholarship, fellowship, sorry, fellowship training in the US. And uh, he was telling me he had also ask some gentleman in Gulu to be his referee, but he doesn't necessarily know how efficient that other person is. First of all, the person is very slow with, with internet. He doesn't check his email frequently. For us to write the letters, you need to check your email and log in and stuff like that. So, it was, so your referee should be someone you know. 
someone familiar to you. Very important. Um, but this is the nature. The name, position, institution, telephone number, and email. One of, the one of the most common ways of reaching out to your referee is via phone call. They call them rather than even sending emails. They call. It makes sense? Do we have any questions? Yes. No, you ask them. However, because you might have had a very, you need to ask them. Because imagine you have been taken in for this position. Huh? And then you have not told them. And then they call them. I have a friend who I also train. He got the job, but he was just a very unserious man. But now he, he, he applied for a position as uh, a procurement assistant. And actually, it's not law development, sir. it is um, the Ganda Law Society. And um, so he used to work in a restock as a sales slash procurement assistant. And uh, as a sales executive. But for him, he would say on his CV, he would put as procurement assistant, procurement and logistics. So he went for the interview. We practiced at night. I taught, trained him at night. He was really, he was very good. He's a very sharp young man. And um, he went for the interviews and, and really did well. But when he left, when he finished, these guys were very impressed with him. They made a phone call immediately to his referee, who, who he had put. They called his, his institution. Uh, tum, pum, pu, pu. Fortunately, he is not a procurement as assistant. There is just a sales officer. But because he was lying, so when they called the institution, they, they, the fortunate thing is that the person who answered the phone was some friend of, of his, who then told the people, oh yes, David Uchai works here, he's a uh, procurement assistant. I think he had updated that lady. That in case anyone calls you anything, just make sure you respond accordingly. So because they wanted to find where they really works there. The good thing is he worked there. The problem is he wasn't really a procurement assistant, it was a sales assistant. The idea is that you call, you put referees who are familiar with you at least. Alternatively, you update them, let them know that you've applied for this position so that it's not strange when you're called. You get it? Yeah. Referees should be people who know you, who, who at least can speak a little bit about your commitment. Okay? Yeah. Very, very important. So, um, uh, like I already said, so those are the one of so those. Those are the two documents. I've already told you we shall have one on one. This is just to quickly introduce you to the key concepts. And all of you who have been who have paid and participating, I'll make sure we work on developing these documents that I'm requiring from you. Number two, after these documents have been put aside we are going to talk briefly about interviews. Interviews. So as a result of that, I'm going to have us to divide ourselves in a group of four. We shall have one, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. So ones come together, twos come together, the threes come together, and the fours together. So number ones, you come here. Number twos, you come here. Number threes, you go the other side. Number fours can be th there. Let's quickly. We're going for an interview. I want to see your skills. Quickly, let's try to hurry. Quickly, quickly, let's try to hurry. Are you only two? This is... 
three. Please, three is uh, needed the other side. Three is. Threes. So we, this is one, three, two, four, and three. Okay. Um, we are going to have, um, you guys are going to go for a quick interview session. I want to see what is it that you know so far. How do you approach these different questions? You get it? How do you approach these different questions that I'll be asking you? How do you manage them? And it's not going to be you sitting just there like that. We shall, we shall want to, uh, uh, we should, it will be a real panel for a job as um, admin assistant. All of you are going to go for an interview where your jobs is going to be admin assistant. Becky. Is that a position you, or oh, let's say policy analysts. Policy analysts? Policy analysts? Okay. Right. Um, maybe you guys can just, I don't know, sit, occupy this seat. Because now that one you're a bit hidden. Yes? Policy analysts for an institution called the International Peace Institute. The institution is International Peace Institute. You write it down. I'm going to give you five minutes. Are you lost? It's the International Peace Institute. You're going to do an interview for a position of uh, policy analysts. Okay? I'm going to give you five minutes in your groups to just quickly discuss any questions that can come for that position. In five minutes, just to discuss. Then we shall go into the questions. This is how it will, it will be handled. This, this group, this is group two. Group two is going to be a panel to these people. You get it? Group two is going to be a panel to these people. These people, you're going to be the, 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 the interviewees. These are the interviewers. Then we shall change having these people being the asking them. The idea is... Uh, that uh, everyone gets engaged. This group is going to interview the other ones. The other ones will interview this one. You get it? it does it make sense? Aha. Uh -huh. So quickly, in the next five minutes, let's anticipate questions. I just want to see your style, your style of doing things. What, what have you learned so far? Let's not make it stressful.
Just to reiterate, we are actually live on YouTube, the e-learning. You, if you have a YouTube, you can just Google e-learning and you see us live. Oh yes, this is UCU. Technology is advanced. Me, I'm watching. Lydia, if you could get the emails of everyone, not, not now, but later after the presentation, I'm going to send you the slides on what we have just talked about.
I think we are we are ready, right? Are we ready? This is this is supposed to be very serious. This is supposed to be very very serious. We are going to ask you basic the questions are going to be very basic. I want you to be basic questions, okay? You who is going to ask them, the questions should be not confusing ones. And they should be about between three to, f maybe let's say three questions at worst, because of time. There are going to be three questions. I know you went in into even discussing about people's relationships or something like that. Similarly, you're going to have three questions for them. Okay? Um, I'm going to randomly select anyone in your group just to, to represent your group. Because of time, otherwise we would have had all of you. However, we shall walk through the preparation later. I was saying, I'm saying, these people are going to ask you, you're going to ask them three questions. They are going to also ask you three questions. I'm going to randomly select the person who is going to be the key lead interviewee. You know when we say interviewer and interviewee? You get it? Uh, no. They shall later, after we have seen the weaknesses area, that's why, that's why it's good to practice. Whether they know or they don't know, it's fine. Don't worry. This is now swallowing saliva. Your questions, we are going to ask you. You should have three questions for them as well. Good. Uh, a few minutes to go. It should be fun. It's just part of the fun. Don't take it so seriously. Well, it's serious, but don't let it be something that will stress you. We are time up. So what I'm trying to look forward is just to see your level. Your level of uh, we are done. Time is up. Dorothy, it's enough. Don't worry. May you please maybe come this side, I think? then you'll be near. You guys sit like this, then this one should sit like this. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to identify randomly just each one member. Then I'm going to expect three questions from these people to, to, to that one member. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Then similarly, I will identify one person from here. Then maybe you will have your three questions. Is that clear? Maureen, here. You're leaving? Dorothy, pushing a bit. OK. We shall start off with uh, we shall start off with the first group here. We want just to to learn from them. Dorothy, please, time is up. Uh, 
interviewers. They're going to interview these people. Let us have him talk. So we're imagining that uh, basically what we're imagining is that uh, this person has walked in. But before that, let's, let's just have you go and see you walk and come in. Eh? We, this is part of the line. I want to see how you're going to come in with the panel that now sit, is seated. Please, you can come in. Have a seat. Good afternoon. How's life? Relax. And can you please talk about yourself and how you you got to know about the job? Um. My name is Sembada Timothy. My name is Sembada Timothy. I'm a, uh, I'm a student at Uganda Christian University, pursuing a bachelor's degree in governance and international relations. I'm here to look at good to know about a job from an advertisement that was in the news and so with the qualifications and the strengths I have, I think I've, I can qualify for the job. And I can do the job well. Okay, so you've talked about your name and then the qualifications that you have. So I'm going to ask you, there are 100 people in this branch. Mm. What makes you think you are the suitable candidate for this job? What makes you think that IPI we take a policy analyst called Mr. Sembacha Timothy, and what qualifications makes you think that out of the 100 people, we can take only this one person to take on the job? Thank you. Um, that one thing that I think would qualify me for this job would be that I think I've got the, the experience and the experience I've got from the different uh, projects, from the different I've tried to analyze some different policies from the different companies, and I think I'm very suitable for this job. Mm, talking about experience, that drives us to our final question. So you have analyzed policies in certain organizations, is that right? Yeah. And I'm going to ask you, to what extent have the recommendations or the solutions that you have given to these organizations been adopted or have they been adopted, have, have they been sent away, and to what magnitude would you attach your success to the policies that you've analyzed? Uh, some of the policies I'll try to analyze on the round table would be very prominent men. Uh, for example, the policy on uh, the, the, the I've been called upon on the different televisions and radio stations to, to critically give my view on the different policies. For example, for example, concerning, concerning the, 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 the policy concerning the so we can H stop. Limit. We can stop there. <laughs> <laughs> you can say age limit. <laughs> <laughs> H this is a, this is between you and your colleagues. So what if you're in the real panel? So that is it. But it's part of the learning. Okay, no no problem. You can as well. 
message it up as possible, it's fine. You have done well. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's now your turn to ask them. So let's have uh, the other lady. Natalia. Uh, why don't we have uh, Esther? Natalia, you wanted to try? Uh. So, would you please, I know Becky is good. He's going to try to answer some of those things. So let's have someone different. <laughs> He's going to try. Sam, what about you? Uh, so let's try now, because you guys have refused. Yeah. Let's be gender sensitive. Yeah. You, okay. You can enter. Then come, quickly. Let us just observe and see what happens. Body language, how they come in, and all of these other things, okay? Seat. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, could you please briefly talk about yourself and what has made you to come to my office? I'm Kasara Natalia from Kogoko District. I applied for this job because I saw the, ad the advert on a newspaper. The advert was about what? It was about police analysts. Policy analyzing in what? Like, it's, it's all about what? The field? The, the posting for police analysts. In police analyst in international the, the organization is International Peace Institute. Well, that's what I wanted. So, could you please briefly talk about any of the policies you know that is part of International Peace Institute? Yeah, the police of the police of. Disability of disability. Okay, so what what do you know about International Peace Institute? International Peace Institute. It is the institute which collects people to talk about peace in the in the world globally. So I applied for the job because I have the qualifications. I pursue a bachelor's degree in public administration, UCU, and I learned some of the course units. For example, for example, public police and police police public public police analysis. So. I know that I will be the best for that job because of that course in particularly. Wow. So could you please talk, give me some of the greatest professional strengths and weaknesses of you as an individual? What makes you feel that you're the most appropriate person to have this job as a policy analyst with IPI? One of them is my paper. The, the bachelor's of degree in public administration and also I'm a hard working, I can work anywhere. Well, thank you very much. Hope to see you next time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's just part of the fun. It's just part of the experience. We're going to have uh, 
uh, Lee, Maureen here be interviewed by these people. You get it? So Maureen, you go and we're planning to enter quickly. You can come in. Have a seat. Um, what has brought you? I've come, to, uh, for, I've come to apply for a job of policy analyst in your company. Um, talk about yourself. What's your name and tell us more about yourself. I'm called Chom Shamorin, a graduate of Uganda Christian University, and I've been doing a course of bachelors of international relations, of governance and international relations. Is that all you want us to know about you? Thank you very much. Um, since you're applying for IPI, would you please tell us the IPI in full and also the policies you have tried to make to see that you s you're really a suitable candidate for that job because it is all about policies. So what are some of the policies you would like to put in place? But before answering the policies, can you tell us IPI in full? Thank you. International Peace Institute. Then, sorry, what was your other question? The question is, can you try to give us some of the policies you would like to implement if at all you're given this job? Okay, I would love to implement the policy of child welfare because I love working with children. Mm, I've, worked in, I've worked with young children before. I did my internship at the orphanage, so I know how to deal with children. I have experience with them. What's the name of this orphanage? It's called Tudia Temba Orphanage. Thank you so much, Maureen. We'll get back to you. Thank you. That is good. That's good. Uh, you can see how people, it's, it's a small sitting, right? But it can bring you sweat. It's, it's, a, it's just an, it's, but it brings you sweat. You try to imagine how you're going to manage it. Maureen, you did well, don't worry. Thank it's you. part of... Uh, Shall I have... Uh, uh, no. Just hold it. That's oh, him. Why have you decided to choose him? Uh, because he's gay and... <laughs> Some of you are scared. Don't worry. Come in, sir. You're welcome. Please have a seat. How are you today? You're welcome. Yeah. Um. Uh. Can you please tell us a little about yourself? Thank you very much. My name is Kasule Daniel, and uh, <coughs> I'm doing a bachelor's degree in governance and international relations at Uganda Christian University. And uh, I've been working with a number of organizations, and one of them is my foundation. I was volunteering there. I was, work I was working with the Children Life Mission, and uh, I was working with the African Music School Organization. And uh, currently, I'm running a project. is about uh, uh, youth Uganda project. So that is basically so far I've done. Thank you. Why should we hire you? Thank you very much for that question. Why should I am is I would like to bring policies. Since the job is about policies, I've worked with a number of organizations and this has given me a number of experience in policy analysis 
I was working with the Children Life Mission, and then we are doing policies of how best we can improve the standards of the children in academics, in welfare, and also in interaction. I've been mentoring these children in interaction, and also how to give public speaking. So when it comes, if you're given this opportunity, work with the organization and make sure that the people I work with, especially the beneficiaries, also get these skills so that they can also achieve the best in life. Thank you. Okay. Um, what you've said, I understand that you, you worked with a foundation. Yes. So my question is, what is your greatest professional strength? My greatest professional uh, strength is public speaking. Please. C can you care to elaborate? Sorry? Please elaborate. Uh, when it comes to public speaking, I've been uh, conducting a number of meetings and I've been conducting a number of sensitization and workshops concerning the relationships and the ethics in terms of communication. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll get back to you. Do you have a question for us? Uh, I don't have any further question, but I'd rather thank you for your time and then calling me for an interview. Thank you. We'll get back to you shortly. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much. That was good, right? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Some exhibition of confidence. And, uh, so, but how was it? I know it is, it's been very, we shall, and believe me, we shall have a very serious engagement on this. Because this is the, this is the meat. One of the biggest challenges that people face. Not that they don't have good results. Not that they don't have good grades. One of the challenge people face is that they are nervous. They are not confident of themselves when it comes to interviews. Right? So how do you make sure that you maneuver? It starts right from that point. In fact, this is, now, this is not where I should start. From that point, you walk in and go to the panel. I'm going to try to demonstrate to you because um, people look at your body language People look at your response. People look at your ability to easily relate critically to the organization. People look at so many things when it comes to interview skills. So do you have them? There are three things you need to always prepare when it comes to interviews. And I want you to, to be very careful with that. I, I want to say... To all the groups that talked, I, I, we, shall have, I, we shall have this session. We shall have all of these engagements, one-on-one, -on -one, and then practice. Number one in an interview, before we even go to the questions, is preparation. Preparation, preparation. Preparing. Have you written it? Under preparation, what do we mean? Because we, we, one of the things is we make big mistakes of starting to prepare a day towards the interview or even on that interview day. One of the other biggest challenges in Uganda, the thing is you're going for an interview to the World Bank, you're now reading only things on the World Bank. You're reading the vision, you're reading the mission. You forget that preparation also requires you to sit down and internally make yourself prepared. Preparation is very, very, is number one. Preparation. Number two, after you're prepared, do you have the relevant information? So information, do you have the relevant information? The relevant information. I'm going to give you a handout on that, which is very, very detailed and is also very, very good for you when you're going for an interview, following the things that I would have discussed with you. And number three, which is the last one, practice. You practice with your mom. Have you practiced with your friends? It doesn't have to be face to face, you can make phone calls. Have you practiced with your teacher, lecturer? Have you practiced? Practice is very, very important because then you can easily know the areas to improve. The three interviews we have had, about four, five, yeah? Haven't you guys already noticed differences in how everyone, which one would you select as the best? Okay, not to point out people anyway, it would be bad. 
But you would really see that there's someone who has done well. And there are people who still need a lot of improvements, right? Yes. So practice plays a very important role. Now, under those three things, we have so many things we can talk about. But because of time constraints, I'm going to walk through very quickly and demonstrate to you the key major questions that are asked during an interview. First of all, in any interview, what should you do when you let's imagine now the day of the interview has come. You have, what, is, what are the things that come to your mind, Doron? What should you do when you're going to the interview, to, to an interview? What, what do you do? So let's leave preparation, let's leave research, let's leave information. You as an individual, what do you do? Let's say my interview is tomorrow. It's today, you're going for it now. Um, okay, let's say it's tomorrow, it's fine. The day before, I'll choose what to wear. So she talks about the dress code. Whether, and, and this, this, I know this one has been told to you so many times. You dress up so well, dress up so well. But I cannot emphasize the idea of dressing smartly for an interview. A smart person builds more confidence. Let me tell you, if you're smart, you speak more eloquent and you feel like the world is yours, especially when you're putting on a coat or whatever it is that you have which is smart. I, I can guarantee you. A smart person is confident. Me, for, at least for me, that is what be, happens. When I, when I feel I'm smart, you cannot play around with me. I just fire for you things and you will not like it. Huh? But smartness is very, very important. Number two, you are saying? Well, um, as a lady, mm -hmm. Still part of smartness. So I'll do my hair. Still part of smartness. I work on my nails. It's part of smartness. Then also the night before I'll read about the organization so that I can have their goals, their objectives. That is part of information. Yes, so I'll gather the information. Yes. Then the day on the interview, I'll make sure I am an hour early. That's an hour early. Time management. Time management. Instead of reaching there, panting in the next 15 minutes or a few minutes, right? Now you have reached there, you have reached early, you have, you're seated, you're waiting, you've been called on to. What do you do? This is basically, this is, this is, these are the key things you need to consider. Number one. We have already told you, pra if, uh, there's what? The, the three things I told you were what? Practice. Preparation, information, relevant information, and practice. Now, let's put those things aside. No, let's no, put those aside. You're dressed up, you're smart, you've practiced, you've prepared. You need to reach there a bit, a bit, an hour early. It's true, 30 to an hour early. So that the environment is familiar. Some interviews, they start, they start evaluating you right from the reception. That receptionist who is speaking you is already evaluating you. Did you know that? Sometimes it starts from, from, from there. The World Bank. Have you, how many of you have heard of the young professional programs for the, for the, for the World Bank? It's a very, very, yeah, it's a very competitive program. If you're 32 downwards, you apply for it. And uh, some of you, you, it might sound a bit strange, but some of us had the privilege of reaching up to the stage, going to France to, uh, for an interview. It's just that it's just so, people who go for that, for that, it's PhD. Of course, you apply for it if you have a master's and a PhD. But very, very competitive. The evaluation starts right from the person you meet at the reception, right from there. So you might not necessarily find that person as appealing, but be respectful. You reach out with guidance. Even when you know that that is the toilet, you ask, excuse me, do you, may you please, may you please direct me to where the toilet is? Oh yes, please. Politeness, innocence. Very important, I cannot emphasize that also enough. 
how you demonstrate yourself plays a very important role. Number two, when you've reached yes. Okay. All right. So we have about 15 minutes. Uh, we, we, we have about 15 minutes. I'm going to try to walk through this very quickly, but when we are done from here, we can shift to maybe a different class if you're not busy. Is that okay? Or you have other things to do? You have other things to do, eh? Sorry? Yeah. Uh, we, it's always time constraints that comes in. Number one, so when you are called inside, you get it? When you're called and you are going to get your seat, how do you do it? Most times, people go to an interview with their academic documents with them. It could be transcripts, it could be certificates, it could be senior four, P7 certificates you have won, like these ones you're going to get from me and things like that. You go with them, your certified documents in a bag. Okay? Because most times in interviews, they want to now look at your documents also to verify that what you've submitted is genuine. You get it? So don't forget those things at home. Whether they're going to ask for them or they're not, you will have carried them. Never forget your documents. So you walk in like many of you did, yes? And then you stand there with respect. Not like you're a military man, but with respect. I, I'm telling you, this is things that people don't learn. When you, it's morning, it is afternoon, it is evening, greet them. Be the first to greet. With a smile on your face. You can decide to offer your hand for greeting, but most people, you never know what the culture is. Some people are not used to greeting. So you, good morning. Good morning, madam. Good morning, this and this. Good morning, so and so. I'm telling you, this is how you should, with respect, good morning, with a smile. You want to be as lucid, as attractive as possible. You're selling yourself. When you greet yourself, you wait for the, the lead, because there's always a lead person in a panel who will be directing, who will be leading the conversation. Oh, please, have a, have a seat. Oh, please, take a seat. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. And you take your seat. You do what? Take you take your seat. Don't just come and boom. <laughs> you take it. Because they say, please take, please have a seat. You take it. Thank you very much, sir. And you sit with confidence. How do you sit? Body language now. You don't sit like you're in your bedroom, <laughs> chilling about to take a cup of coffee. <laughs> Chila. <laughs> yeah? What's up? You sit with respect. Take your seat. Here we are. Oops. You sit with respect. And you take your seat. And you can place your hands on your thighs. Whatever it is, comfortable. Sometimes Donald Trump likes doing this. Doing that. Oh, you can just do this. You get it? And you sit up straight. Straight. I, I'm telling you this certification I got in Budapest training people on this communication is exactly how I'm, everything is done. And you, you should be very clear. So you take your seat with a smile. You don't sit and you look like you're about to punch people. So you take your seat and you are waiting. You say, thank you, um, with a smile. Then normally the lead person, the lead panelist, okay, is going to start telling you about uh, why you're there, asking you whether you know the position you have come for, telling you about who the other colleagues are on the panel, maybe asking them to introduce themselves, what you, you should be doing, you're getting it, is to remember, first of all, the name of that lead person. You're getting it. 
remember, try as much as possible to remember the name of two or three people. The importance, you'll come to learn about it later. So once they are done introducing you, you say thank you very much for that introduction, Mr. Walter Okello, or whoever it is. In any interview, in most interviews, the first question is for you to introduce yourself. You know, that is where the meat of our discussion is going to be. A person who opens up a good introduction normally wins the panel. You get it? A person who opens up wins the panel. How? Because he is clear, he has practiced, he or she has practiced, he or she is engaging using the name of the person who the lead interviewer is. Normally the lead interviewer asks you, may we please know you or may you please tell the panel about who you are or tell us about yourself. That is, that is a, a very direct question which you should have been very clearly prepared for. And how do you respond to that? He, he tried. All of you tried. But we need to add on to some meat. I want you guys, by the end of this semester or by the end of, uh, we just have 10 minutes, 10 minutes to go. By the end of this session or whenever, if we proceed later on at some point, to go with an understanding of how interviews are, are won. Because that is where the key thing is. So you've taken your seat, right? Walter Kumakech has introduced himself. Sorry, he has told you, has introduced his team. He's the head of human resource. You've thanked him. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, most normal people say Mr. Kumakech. The issue is you should say Mr. with the surname. Most people say Mr. Walter. That is, it's Mr. with the surname. So if you remember the surname, then you can use it. Okay, or you could, Madame or Mr. Someone, Madame Catherine, that would also go with the first name. How many of you know what the first and, la and surname is? You know it. Because you never know, you don't have to assume. So you have, you have taken your seat. We, all of you will practice this. You have taken your seat. Um, you've, so tell us about yourself. In telling people about yourself, there are three different things you have to always, always, always narrow. The question, tell us about yourself, you start off with your name. You get it? Then you should bring in a bit about your education. Then you should bring in your experience. Then you should bring in a little bit about the skills. All of this you're going to say them in not more than 2.5 minutes to three minutes. Actually 2.5 or two minutes at worst. Sometimes after this, not sometimes, you should, you should re-emphasize your point and say that uh, you are the best candidate for this. You believe. I believe. I am the best candidate. Now, in any introduction, in any beginning of your name, my name is Maureen, this and this. My name is, some of you would start off and say, my name is called, I am by the names of, people call me if, uh, my names are, my name is my name. What is your name? The, 
So my name is Pasqualino Okello. Sometimes you apply, if it's for the International Peace Institute, and you know this is the International Peace Institute works with sec on security issues, you want to bring in a little bit about your background. So my name is Pasqualino Okello. I come from Gulu in northern Uganda. You will maybe understand that in northern Uganda we had over 30 years of civil unrest. I believe part of the contribution and my background will inform the security learning and security policy making process of this, of this institution. I hold a master's in public policy from the Central European University in Budapest, Hungary. My education in Hungary introduced me to three key concepts. Number one, I learned how to write effective policy papers, which is important for the role as a policy analyst. It introduced me to reading broadly for different policy briefs or literature. But number three, it has also built my international connections and network. I believe my education in this field will play a very important role in your organization. I have also studied at the Uganda Christian University with a bachelor's in public administration and management. In Uganda Christian University, I did internships with the Parliament of the Republic of Uganda and also with the Office of the President. Internationally, my experience drives from the International Crisis Group and also working with the Department for Department for International Development in the UK. Given the broad experience of my skill and education, I believe I am a suitable candidate for this role who has skills in communication, effective uh, interpersonal skills. I have a broad experience in working with different computer systems like MS Word and all those things. I believe these skills will make me a suitable candidate for this role. So you realize that I've spoken about all of these things, but in more than, in, in not more than two minutes maybe, or even less. It sounds right now that it's long, but you should, for you to master it, you should have practiced it. So you remember the three points I told you. So you should have done what? Practiced it. If you introduce yourself like that, I can guarantee you, people will be, I should, say, I should show you a message. I think I was telling this class, some of you in my other classes, that uh, there's a lady who approached me. I think she, has, she graduated in 2012, and she has been looking for jobs. And so she applied for some job, and I worked on her CV and all that stuff. And then she has been called for an interview. If I showed you the message she sent me, she just feels it was one of the best. So that is it. Start practicing it now. If I were to ask you, if you were in an interview, this is how you would break down your introduction. So you're, you're sitting, you've calmed yourself, the person who is asking, so if it is him who is asking, you turn to that person. Thank you very much. What's your name? Herbert. Uh, thank you, madam. Uh, thank you very much, Herbert. Maybe you might not necessarily know the name as Mr. or whatever it is. So, thank you very much for that very interesting question. Uh, my name is this and this and that. So, the next person asks you don't. When someone asks you, you focus on that person, keeping eye contact, body language. You get it, and don't 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 look into the sky like you're confused. Don't. Okay? That is number one. Just one of the questions on interviews. I want you to practice that like there is no tomorrow. Because an, an excellent opening introduction is already a gear for you to, to impress the panel. Number two, sometimes questions on strengths and weaknesses are very common during interviews. Well, they are common, but but you find out people really struggling with the issue of strengths and weaknesses. The other question, yes. The other question is also on uh, 
uh, on why the International Peace Institute, why are you applying for this, to this organization? Well, um, I told you if you start talking about these things, it will require more time, and we are already time short. Um, so what I would encourage us to do, if we can still have some more time, because we have not yet even sc covered scholarships. You guys are looking also tired somehow. We have not yet covered scholarships. So, and this, uh, there's another class coming in here. So let's, let's maybe politely close it for today, and then we shall continue having the discussion outside here to see another alternative day to continue. Right? Okay.